once again, we are still looking at Magus Travail. Uh, he's in rest and detention. Uh, with us to discuss this is uh, Mr. Olari Wajus Raj. It's a pleasure having you on Sahara TV, Mr. Raj. Thank you very much for having me. Let me start by asking what your initial reaction is of the arrest of the EFCC chairman, uh, Ibrahim Magi, uh, yesterday as he was taken to the presidential villa, appearing before a presidential panel, investigating him on alleged corruption and uh, insubordination charges. What, what's your reaction to it? I think you actually put it um, in a better uh, statement by saying it is actually an arrest, uh, even though uh, it's been reported from the government side that it is more or less like an invitation. Uh, but this is obvious uh, that if what is considered an invitation is carried out with the apprehension of uh, the invitee on the street of Abuja, that is actually beyond um, an invitation. That is number one. Number two uh, is the also failure of the government to communicate with Nigerians on the circumstances that is surrounding the establishment of the panel, the invitation of the panel, the operation of the panel, and the sitting of the panel, except within the realm of speculation. Uh, before now that there was a panel set up to actually investigate the allegations that were contained in the leaked memo of the Attorney General of Speculation. The other point is that the failure of also that um, government to show leadership and also clearly convince Nigerians that there's actually someone that mm -hmm. is leading the government, that is in charge of affairs, and also coordinating what happens in government. That you can see with the way things happened yesterday, that that is not going mm -hmm. to be a valid mm -hmm. statement to be made by anybody. Uh, those allegations are things that should be investigated. This is what would have been celebrated that there's a committee, um, administrative for that matter, you know, uh, to first establish the verity of the allegations that were contained in the MMO of the Attorney General. Uh, this would have provided the basis uh, for the government to either prosecute through any of the other law enforcement agencies, uh, Mr. Mag, uh, if he was to be indicted, or for the government to call for the investigation by any of the investigating uh, law enforcement agencies. But this mm -hmm. act is an administrative panel. And for an administrative panel, you can have uh, someone that is under that investigation, not only just arrested, but even detained. And what an administrative panel would do mm -hmm. is to simply invite anybody, uh, not subpoena, invite anybody in their own interest to actually come and present their case. And failure to do that would have been sufficient for that panel to then suspect a prima facie case of indictment against the uh, officer in, in, in concerned. And the report would have gone to the president to say the so 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 person, you know, alleged was invited, or anybody that actually uh, constituted the panel and clearly stated that, you know, the uh, alleged have failed to come forward before the panel and then defend him or herself. And that would have been sufficient. Unfortunately, it is, like I said, <laughs> showing a clear absence of uh, coordination where it is expected that by now it is either the government could have issued a statement about the panel, issued a statement about either the invest invitation or even suspension of Magu, and then the investigation of all the allegations against him. But this is not the case. Everything has just been left to the realm of rumors and speculations. And this is not in the interest of Nigeria as a country in the interest of the fight against corruption, and even in the interest of the image of the, of the government. Now, let me get your view on this. I mean, political observers have actually alluded to the fact that the arrest and detention of uh, the, uh, for Ibrahim Magu himself uh, is, a, is a result of a power play between Mr. Magu and uh, a power block that has been led by the Attorney General of the Federation. What's your view on this? 
Oh yeah, there's there's no doubt about that. It's been the trend. So everybody knows that, you know, um there's never been any love lost between the Attorney General and uh, uh and Magu. It's it's been, you know, uh, a cat and mouse relationship between um the Attorney General of the Federation and a particular set of uh clique uh in the government of uh, President Buhari and even Magu. So it is not starting today. Uh, people in, in, in the executive council conspired with the uh, Eighth Assembly to deny Magu uh, the confirmation of the Senate. Uh, people have written quite a number before now. Uh, the Attorney General had written, you know, some damning reports, you know, uh, on the activities of the EFCC uh, before now. So if you look at all those allegations, which could have simply been submitted or sent to Magu in the form of a query, uh, now forming uh, a, a memo to the president. Uh, if you also see the, recognize the fact that those allegations could have actually been um, submitted to another law enforcement agency for investigation, we should have then concretized some of those allegations and remove it from the realm of just mere allegations. So if you're saying he has bought properties in, are out of the country. It simply would just be for you to then say, say this particular property with this number at this address at, of this value was bought by Margu, either directly or indirectly, and then connect him to it. That is where you can have allegation and then you ask him to come and also respond. Uh, if you're saying that he's been insubordinating uh, your office, then you say on what cases uh, that you have the insubordination. I, I, we, we, can, we can see on how the Office of the Attorney General had gone to withdraw some of the high-profile corruption cases, you know, uh, filed and prosecuted by the EFCC before now. Uh, and if you see that that was a memo meant for the president and which found its way also to the public uh, in the media, it, it will tell you that the purpose uh, was not actually to investigate the issue. Except, uh, especially with the fact that the suggested names were already even included in the memo for consideration as replacement for Margo. So it means that these were not just about um, investigating the veracity of those allegations uh, to then determine if the Margo was either guilty or otherwise. But it's about just the ultimate objective of removing him from that office. Uh, considering the power play and the shenanigans that is uh, playing out, uh, and, uh, it appears that the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, Malami himself, appears to be an arrowhead or a major agent of a, a power block that is not really interested, so to say, in the Buhari's anti-corruption fight, as uh, being alleged. Can we contest the fact that uh, Malami may have been exploiting his alleged loyalty and closeness to the President for his personal uh, a power block agenda, please. Well, it's, it's rather unfortunate. Uh, if you look at it after um, the, the president, the vice president, uh, and okay, maybe the secretary to the government, the, the attorney general is the chief law officer of the country. Uh, and by that position, he weighs, uh, he weighs so much influence and power. And that positions him, you know, uh, as uh, very close and next to authority. And you will understand that there's really any law, um, any contract um, between the country and the international community, even the operations of the law enforcement agencies and collaboration with the international partners are at the whims and caprices of the Office of the Attorney General to the central authority. Uh, with also businesses that are locally uh, domiciled in the country. The Office of the Attorney General is heavily involved. Uh, and it is such uh, an, a lucrative office, I should, I should put it at that. That is why you will still see the kind of involvement uh, in the ongoing Malabu case that, that you have the former Attorney General, um, Mohamed Adoke, uh, indicted in not only receiving some of the loot of the money, but also uh, facilitating the process of that contract to the detriment of, of Nigeria. So it, it's an office that can actually um, be deployed depending on the occupant of the office. 
uh, to defend the either defend the integrity of the country and also the rule of law in the country or the abuse of the rule of law and also satisfy personal and individual um, interests. Let's look at some of the issues prior to now, I mean, with regards to uh, Mr. Abubakar Malami himself. Uh, uh, prior to now, we, we've had, and based on uh, your earlier analysis, uh, the non-confirmation experience of Mr. Bagu by the 8th uh, Assembly, which was orchestrated by the power block and supported by the DSS security reports. Uh, we also have the fact that the, the no, the, the, there is a non-submission of Mago's uh, reconfirmation since uh, uh, May 2019. And uh, the alleged memo, which was a bit, I mean, leaked to the press, uh, uh, alleging corrupt practices against uh, Mr. Magu. And uh, the, the fact that uh, Malami himself had demanded uh, certain high profile cases from uh, Magu, which uh, the letter has been resisted. Uh, does this not show that the Attorney General himself may have not manifested a genuine commitment to the anti corruption fight? Well, I, I, I can remember that I. My organization recently requested from the office of the attorney general because it's the chief law officer of the federation, and most of even the cases by EFCC, ICPC, and the rest are filed on behalf of the office of the attorney general. And as of today, we have no record of even cases independently filed by the office of the attorney general uh, with reference to uh, the fight against corruption. We are only counting as of today, and yet to even have uh, the full figure, the number of cases that were withdrawn by the Office of the Attorney General, high-profile anti-corruption cases, that shows um, clearly that the Office of the Attorney General is not actually in tandem with the mantra of this current government in terms of the fight against corruption, and that it is also going to be very difficult for any occupant of, uh, of the law enforcement agencies, I mean, anti-corruption agencies in, in Nigeria, to independently perform in that office with the support of the attorney general. Anybody that is going to do that will do that without the support of the attorney general and likely to end up the way that Magu is actually facing it with the uh, office of the attorney general. But what is clear, unfortunately, is that the President seems to have given a measure of support to uh, Magu. And it seems that the president was in a dilemma to either uh, support the poster boy and also the poster agencies of, agency of the government uh, in the a fight against corruption, that is Magu and the EFCC, against the interests represented by um, um, the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, who can be considered as really, uh, mm -hmm. without fear of contradiction, a, a kind of, you know, a stumbling block to the fight against corruption. Uh, and this is where you would then have to determine if the president is really genuinely committed to the fight against corruption or is completely um, overpowered, overwhelmed by this interest that is represented by. Um, uh, Attorney General, and for me, this is what I would want to. I think the second is the is, is the state of what we had. The, the president believes in Magu uh, doing the work. He wasn't ready to remove him from office, which is why he has not been suspended or removed from office till now. Uh, but the uh, characters and the powers uh, that seems to have a very high, you know. Um, listening with the president and also connected uh, within the power play uh, against you know uh, the uh, activities of magu the successes uh, recorded on and in the fight against corruption and for them the magu has to go and that you can also connect with the memo uh, that was leaked uh, obviously that, that memo wasn't written when it was leaked to the press it's been written uh, sometimes before but because uh, the authors and the interest behind the memo were unable to actually get the favorable response and disposition of the president, you know, to that memo. Then they had to leak it to the press so that it can then be a public issue and then there'll be public pressure on the government to um, take an action. 
on on the content of the memo. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, where that could not be achieved with the automatic ultimate re removal of Magu, uh, then they had to also be, I mean, because the, the current chairman of the panel, it's, some, it's a man of integrity and anybody would have relied on or trusted the uh, findings of the panel. Uh, but that is possibly not going to satisfy the interest and the purpose of the authors of the memo. Uh, this then would inform what you experienced yesterday, which would then divide Nigerians, you know, between, oh, okay, mm -hmm. prosecute him, oh, release him, uh, okay, investigate him, oh, okay, indict him. And then you won't have um, a report that will actually be respected by the overwhelming uh, majority of Nigerians. Uh, let me get your perspective on this, uh, considering, irrespective of whatever the outcome of this uh, alleged uh, panel uh, investigation is, uh, come here. Uh, will you subscribe to uh, Mr. Magu's uh, resignation, calling, recalling the fact that I mean, this has actually I mean, called to question his integrity as a corruption pie? Uh, and uh, besides, uh, we have the PDP, the opposition party, that has come out to ask that he step aside and allow that on hidden probe mm -hmm. to allegations of the malfeasance mm -hmm. against him. Uh, another political watchers have actually asked that he step aside. Will you agree that it is time that he steps aside? Uh, I not because um, PDP is saying so. I mean, because unfortunately, that that is actually one party that has really failed Nigeria. Uh, and Nigerians in terms of, you know, standing up on issues that would resonate. It's become, you know, such a party that is already just a joke and with many of the statements. And it's all about statements that would only just dance to a public gallery without any concrete, you know, um, substance in engaging uh, the government. I, I would rather support the idea that Magu um, should resign uh, basically because he has done more than enough. He has given this government more than a bargain for, even in the fight against corruption. And I would say possibly he has given this government more than it deserved in the fight against corruption. So now that his integrity is intact, he can, and, and I think he's actually spent, you know, um, approximately he's already spent a term in, in that office, uh, not in full control of activities in government anymore. I think it would be better for him uh, not to allow the hawks uh, to uh, drag him in the mud and also not to allow the government that is not in full control of um, their affairs around the government to, to leave them and then even from outside defend all the allegations and integrity and his integrity to the last letter. Finally, what do, does all this portend for the anti-corruption fight of the presidency? No, I think we, they've just lost it. This is, this is going to derail. I mean, you have all the accolades and all the support from outside the country. Um, even the opposition uh, in criticizing Magu, uh, when they sit down uh, within themselves, uh, they would know that he has acted almost in the best interest of, of the government. And that is not only local, it's also international. Uh, but with this, you can be sure that uh, the detractors of Magu would not bring people who will serve the interest of the country, but rather people who would serve the political and the selfish interest of uh, many of them. And uh, this will, is, is for us to wait and see. Like I said, the EFCC is not the only law enforcement or anti-corruption agency in Nigeria, but it's been the one in the recent past, you know, at the front line of the fight against corruption. So if all we can get now is to set that uh, backward, there's no body that is brought into office now that is not going to take one of these, you know, cracking. And that is what we're going to have to wait for. It is not because Magu is indispensable, it is because of the circumstances that surrounds, you know, an attempt to remove him and the interest that people behind, you know, that mm -hmm. attempt represents.